nearly eight months from that night in Paris. 232 days to be precise. All the way over in Belgrade. And we finally, finally won a game away from home. Partizan Bel Belgrade nil, Manchester United won. This is your Europa League match review. Yeah, we won. We won away from home. Um, it's been a long, long time coming. I know in, in between we had internationals and I know international, sorry, um, pre-season and all that. Yeah, but the reality is it's been a long time coming. Way too long at that. 6th of March 2019, that night in Paris. The, the night that really confirmed Solskjaer as the Manchester United manager. And it's been downhill ever since. It's been downhill. We're not going to get into the nooks and crannies about why, etc, etc. But we are in a bad place. We had a good result on the weekend um, against Liverpool. And we come here today knowing that the weekend game against Norwich is probably the most important. For me, it is the most important this week. But we still had to get a result. Um, I said I, was, I, would, I would have taken a draw away because you win your home games in the group you draw your away games you're through top of the group 12 points um everything's rosy if you can win your away games as we did today and of course it puts you in, in an even better position uh we made what seven changes from the liverpool game uh, romero started the, the the best backup keeper best number two in the premier league um and he made a couple of decent saves today uh we had one back at right back. Obviously, he he kept his place. We stuck stuck with the three five two or three four one two, whichever we want to call it. So the three at the back actually were Jones, Maguire, and Rojo. So Lindelof was replaced there um, across the you might say the midfield five or the midfield four even. Um, one back right wing back. James Garner in for Fred and Scott McTominay. He retained his place with Brandon Williams at left wing back, um, replacing Ashley Young. And Mata was in the number 10 position, uh, ahead of uh, Pereira. And the two split strikers, Anthony Martial, back, started his first game. In, it must be something like eight weeks. Um, and Jesse Lingard here, he was also back from injury. So a number of changes, a number of players still to get back to full fitness. And I think, for me, it really showed, um, especially, I say especially in the first half, because obviously Martial, he came off midway through the second half, but the ball was not sticking. It wasn't, uh, we, weren't, we, weren't, we weren't keeping parties and peg back in their half because as the ball went forward it seemed to come back um, when we passed it around in our you know our half or uh, the first two thirds of the pitch yeah everything was comfortable but once we went forward it usually came back pretty quickly we could, couldn't get any kind of link play going with our with our front men both of them as I said coming back from injury so partly excused um, in that regard but throughout the game it just it just highlighted, and every game I watch, it just highlights more and more the lack of quality we have, especially in the midfield, but lack of quality going forward in general. And we had one shot on target in the match. That's one shot in on target in two Europa League games consecutively. Away at Alkmaar, last time out and away at Belgrade. Um, first half, as I said, when the first 20... Minutes or so went by, not much action. Um, Tomine had a header, which he probably should have scored from a matter free kick, but other than that, he should have at least hit the target. Other than that, nothing to report. And then the game just livened up. Partizan kind of took the impetus, you might say. Um, in control, I want to say control, but they became the team who looked like they wanted to go and get a goal. We, we seemed very comfortable. 
as the game was uh, meandering along. And they came out, you know, put, put us on the back foot. And at no point at that stage did we look like we were in any kind of trouble. They put us on the back foot. And it forced us to wake up, forced us to come out. And we we had the first real, real chance where Jesse Lingard hit the, um, the post from outside the box. It was actually a good tackle from Wan Bissaka pressing on the edge of the partisan box. Won the tackle, a uh, little flick over to Lingard and he dug it out from under his feet. Um, but it just didn't curl enough and hit the post. And Paisan went right up at the other end and forced uh, the, the opportunity or shot of their own. I think it was Umar Sadiq, I think it might have been. Is that his name? Their, their uh, striker. He was he was lively. He was lively all game. Um, his name is definitely Umar. Sadiq Umar. Umar Sadiq. Um, he had a shot and it hit the, the post. Curling shot, like it started well outside the post, and but it just didn't curl enough. It didn't have enough. Um, well, the distance it travelled, it just hit the post, and Rojo cleared up. The game came to life, and then we went up the other end again. And the uh, excellent Brandon Williams, I think this is his second appearance in the Europa League, may well be his second start, full stop in um, all competitions. I can't remember if he started uh, the League Cup game against Rochdale. But he burst down the left hand side, ran at his man, overlapping, uh, and he, he got into the box. And you know, the moment where you're thinking, all right, we need to get this cross across the box, you know, pass this low cross across the box, easy tapping for someone. Um, he took one more touch, past the defender, the defender lunged in, and a penalty, stonewall penalty, nothing. There is no VAR in the Europa League, but it was clear as day, um, nothing that. Partizan could really argue and the, and the replay showed that Anthony Marshall stepped up and said his first start in about eight weeks slotted it calmly past the keeper the, the opposite direction he watched the keeper until he moved and put it into the other corner 1-0 that was our first shot on target and that was our only shot on target the keeper was not tested throughout the rest of the game before and after that um, in total we only had five shots because the second half Somewhat similar, but not to the same extent uh, as the Liverpool game. We were just pegged back, pegged back in our own half. Now, players are actually having shots and and actually causing us problems. I might say. I know Liverpool scored in the end on on Sunday, but I wasn't really worried until maybe the last ten minutes when um you know what uh, what's his name Oxlade and and Kato was on and. Oxley had a shot, for example, and you know, other than that, they, they weren't cutting us open. The hair wasn't making all the saves. Whereas this game, Romero made a couple decent saves. One of them was uh, when I, I can't remember. It may have been Sadiq as well, um, Uma Sadiq. I can't remember, but he ran at the the back line, the back three as it was at the time. Faked a shot, it might it might be someone else, but he faked a shot, cut inside, sent Maguire. I mean, Maguire went for the block, and obviously it was a fake shot, cut inside, and Maguire was out of the equation, but his shot, his left foot shot was straight at Romero, and there was another chance from Asano, um, the ex-Arsenal player, who from, from a corner, he ran on the near post and flicked it on, but again, it was too close to Romero, good reflex save, and we were able to clear it. But for me, it was just a poor very poor second half performance and as I said it just highlighted when we got the ball we weren't able to really fashion any chances we brought on Dan James we brought on Rashford and Dan James showed what he does he gets the ball around at his gut um at his men and he was taken out a few times there was just a chance where he could have and probably should have released Rashford I think we would have been on for a, a three on two and he just kept the ball you know one touch too long won the free kick but it could have been much, much more. Um, Rashford had acres in front of him. But those those opportunities to all... all this, those opportunities to break did fashion himself, but too often in that second half, we, we the, the final pass or whatever it may have been, a, a lack of control, it, the ball just kept coming back, kept coming back, kept coming back. And in the end, we were, I won't say hanging on for their life, but they were the only team who really liked to score. Um, we didn't have anyone in the midfield that really put their foot on the ball and said, all right, I'm going to settle this down. 
Um, Solskjaer then changed to a back four, took off Wan Bissaka and uh, Martial brought as a brought on Rashford and um, Daniel James, and he put Jones at right back. I'm, I'm fine with that. I know Jones, he's not very good. He didn't have a great game. He made some crucial balls late on, though, but he didn't have a great game at all. Um, you can see why he's, what, fourth, fifth choice. So you've got Maguire, Lindelof, Rojo, um, Twan Zabi, and all ahead of him. So he's the fifth choice centre-back at the moment, which is stark contrast to previous years where he was kind of first and second choice. But... Um, he made some good blocks late on in the game when the crosses were coming across, headers and um, interceptions. Maguire himself, he recovered from that that embarrassing moment when he was sent. Um, and he himself made some blocks and headers as well to, to, to keep parties in that bay, to keep a clean sheet and keep the win. Um, but as I said, yeah, the midfield, it just wasn't good enough. Um, James Garner looked good at times, but as the game wore on, it, maybe he tired, I don't know where it was, or the pressure got um, was getting to him as, as we were we were under more pressure. We needed someone to just take the game. I said by the scruff in there, but just put it on the ball. Come back for it down. Let's play the game at our pace. But we were rushed. Um, and we, we didn't really create anything other than right at the end. Uh, Pereira came on and he... I'm sure it was Pereira. Or was it James? I think between Prayer and James, they made, uh, Prayer and James linked up, that's right. And James cut in into the box, passes the man, and a, a low pass across the face of the box. Mata couldn't connect with it. I think it may have gone under him or just, it may have been just behind him. I think it was under his foot more than anything. Uh, where he kind of just slightly overran uh, the incoming pass. That would have made it 2 0. That would have been the first game that we would have scored two goals in since the first day of the season against uh, Chelsea as it is we did a 1-0 three points seven from um three games is an outcome in their game one six nil so they they will be top of the group on goal difference um I think goes to head to head in the end once everything all is said and done but yeah, I said before I would have taken a draw because I knew we were going to make changes. I, I hoped we made changes because we got a big game against Norwich on must be Sunday. Um, but we got the win uh, again. Not a good performance. It, it's not filling me with any joy. It's not filling me with any hope. But I'm I'm happy that we've. If you play bad and you get the result, you take it. It's better than playing bad and losing, or playing bad or even and even drawing. So, you know, you have to take what you're given right now. In Manchester United it's a, it's a massive work in progress. Um, but seven points on three, on the face of it, it's not bad. But two goals in those three games shows that we got a lot of work to do. Norwich on the weekend ain't going to be easy at all. Um, but we're going to see some, you know, uh, fresh, not fresher, but the, the more the first team members um, on on the weekend. Rashford and Marshall, I'm hoping, are both starting. But it could be Rashford and James. It depends how Marshall is training. Because um, Gazzi clearly wasn't 100% fit today. Or, or match fit, should I say. I mean, neither was Lingard. So they may go with Rashford and James and bring Marshall off the bench. Who knows? Um, and Fred will probably return into the midfield. Pereira behind Matt and Lindelof instead of Jones. But Brandon Williams, after the final word, really has to go to him. Um, 19 year old, first time really, well, first time in the Man United first team squad. And I haven't seen him have a bad, bad game yet. Uh, off the top of my head, I think he's come on in the Premier League as a sub, possibly. I can't remember exactly. Did he, I can't remember if he, did he came against Liverpool. Yeah, he did. He came against Liverpool. And then maybe another game he came on already. But Rochdale comes to mind. And two Europa League games, especially today. Um, he was he was brilliant. Um, and I guess when, when your team's not playing bad, it is... When you say when your team's not playing good, there's two ways. It can either... You can either shrink with the rest of the team. Or 
a good performance looks like a scintillating one because it's compared next to a lot of crap. But I have to give him credit with Drew. He, he took he was always uh positive when he got the ball, he's always looking to go forward, given goals. He's right forward, inverted right back, but he's comfortable with both. Um sorry, inverted, inverted left back, but he's comfortable on both feet. So he went down the line, he came inside, um, he gave his marker something to think about. And then defensively he was also solid. I don't remember anything really like they were they were attacking him down his side. When you think you got one back on the other side, so the the instinct would be, alright, let's go down this young youngster, inexperienced guy. But he didn't look out of place at all and for me that um that is a good sign for the future. We've got an issue with left back. Shaw can't stay fit um and he hasn't and he, he probably won't fulfill the pro promise that we thought when he, we first signed him. Injuries has played a massive, massive part of it. That first injury alone, and he's had a lot of niggling ones ever since. Um, and, you know, there's been talk about, you know, Cresswell, even in the past, um, talks about uh, Alexandro, Danny Rose. That left-back position is something we, we haven't sorted out, something we do need to sort out. But if Brandon Williams can make it his own, make it his own. Like, if you look at Liverpool, for example, I'm um, speaking of uh, another fullback, a young fullback, Trent. And I'm not saying, before anyone gets their knickers in the twist, I'm not saying they're in the same boat. But Nathaniel Clyde had his injury issues at right back, and Liverpool um, had their injury issues in the fullback areas or just defensive issues. Milner was playing left back. Trent showed his ability in the in the you know the lower squads, the unders, and. Brought him up to the first team. He started off a bit rocky, um, and he's made that spot his own. Now I ain't saying Brandon Williams is, become, is going to become a world class left back. I don't know. We will see. But this is an opportunity for him because sure he can't secure his position because of injuries, and now he looks very scared when he's on the ball, scared to take on his man, scared to be tackled because of you know I think his past troubles and uh, and problems um fitness wise. Ashley Young well Ashley Young now make it. He's not a fullback, he's not a defender. He's a club captain. He's in, you know he can inspire the youngsters. But I really don't want to see him starting. I know he had to be fair he had a DC a good eight, 85 minutes against Liverpool. He had a good 85 minutes. Nothing was troubling him and then there lots of concentration between him and then an error basically from Rojo. And we conceded. Now, I'm not saying that Brandon Williams is going to be perfect, but I'll be, I'll be, I'll rather see a 19-year-old fullback who hasn't yet put a, a real foot wrong, hasn't had a bad game, um, looks a natural defender, a natural fullback, play there instead of Ashley Young. So we'll see what happens on um, Sunday. Of course, we've only played Thursday, so he may. Solskjaer may rest him, rotate um, because of the, the minutes in the legs. But he's a youngster. He's gonna he's gonna want to he's gonna want to play. He's gonna have the energy and and he should have the energy and the desire to play. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, one nil, not great. Um, Brandon Williams man the match. Seven points, three games. We move. Make sure you hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. And I'll see you soon.